Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we will start with the examination of the nose. For any examination, there are four prerequisites. Just before touching the patient, think about those four prerequisites. Even at postgraduate level, you have to follow these, this scheme. And in all the specialities, same scheme applies. First thing is your introduction. This is patient's right that he or she must know the treating physician or treating doctor. So you have to introduce yourself to the patient. Second thing is consent of the patient. Without consent, you are not supposed to touch the patient. For example, there is a female patient. She doesn't like to be examined by a male surgeon or a male gynecologist, so she can refuse. And vice versa. Then, if there is a female patient, for example, the nursing attendant or female's attendant should be there. And in their presence, you have to examine the patient. So first thing is your introduction. Second thing is consent. Third thing is exposure for that particular examination. For example, if I have to examine the abdomen of the patient, of course, we cannot uh, examine the abdomen while sitting here and with all breast covered. We need special exposure. So, exposure for that particular examination. And fourth thing is position. Again, for example, we have to examine the spine. Spine cannot be examined while patient is sitting like this. So whatever the position is required for that particular examination, that should be adopted. So again, just I repeat it, inspection, uh, sorry, introduction, consent, exposure, position. Now coming to my specialty, that is ENT. After introduction of myself to the patient and having the consent of the patient as he has been volunteered, so consent is there. The minimum exposure for ENT examination is required that is up to tip of the shoulders. <coughs> because at the end we have to examine the neck for lymph nodes. So in every examination, ENT examination, minimum exposure is up to the tip of the shoulders. Then position is that patient's legs should be on one side and your legs should be on other side and you will be roughly at an arm's length from the patient. So this will be the position for ENT examination. Once we have adopted all these four steps, we will proceed to examine the, for example, today we are going to examine the nose. Nose, we know that it, in examination of the nose, nose, paranasal sinuses, and nasopharynx will be included. And at the end, we have to examine the neck for lymph nodes. Okay? Nose, we know that there is external nose and there is internal <laughs> nose. So we will start with the external <laughs> nose. Now for examination, again, we have got four tools. One is inspection, then is palpation, third one is percussion, and fourth is auscultation. In ENT, inspection and palpation, auscultation and percussion if required. But I include it into the scheme so that you can memorize it. That basic scheme remains the same, but some steps we can omit according to the speciality. So inspection and palpation definitely will be there, but percussion and auscultation, if it is required, are indicated. So for inspection, we have to go for headlight on your head and you will just always spend even a few seconds for inspection before touching the patient in any examination. From inspection you will gather so much information. So we will go for so so when I say I will do the inspection so on the forehead he has got here, so I just 
you know, go far so that I can see the forehead, any abnormality in the frontal sinus, you know the pod puffy tumor, okay, on inspection we have to go far again, what is stadicanthus, the shape of the nose, as you know cosmetically nose is very important, then not only from the front but from the profile also I examine because if for example there is a supratic depression, small supratic depression, by looking from the front it may not be obvious or it may not be visible or so much prominent but when we are looking at from the forehead it may be evident. Secondly we know that nose has got nasofrontal angle, nasolabial angles, these are different from male and females, there may be retraction of the columella. So we have to examine it from the profile from the lateral side as well. Once we have done that, then we will go to palpation. In a short case, you are being asked, you may, you may not have an idea that which particular area of the patient may be tender. Tender means painful to touch. So before touching, be careful and to be, because in examination for example, if I touch some area and patient feels pain or he moves back like this, that is a bad sign for you from examination point of view, examiner's point of view, as well as from patient's point of view, because we are not here to harm the patient or to make him painful. So to be on safe side, just before palpation, you can say the patient that if at any particular area patient feels pain, just let you know. So that patient mentally is ready for that maybe while you are palpating, some area may be painful. So for palpation, you don't need the headlight. So you can go without headlight or you can turn off your headlight and then you will be palpating it. First you will be go for nasal bridge, continuity, any depression because in fracture nasal bone there may be some depression as well. Then nasal bones, again some crepitus may be visible along with nasal bones, infraorbital margins, supraorbital margins and then you will go for frontal sinus anterior wall, frontal sinus anterior wall on this side, just below the medial end of the eyebrow, just go for floor of frontal sinus on this side, floor of the frontal sinus on this side, between nasal bridge and medial canthus for ethmoid sinuses, you are palpating, then maxillary sinus on this side and maxillary sinus on this side. And while you are palpating, already you have asked the patient if he feels pain, let you know. And you are looking at the facial expressions of the patient as well. And one thing you would have noticed that while I am palpating the sinuses, this is one by one. Not simultaneously, both should not be. Because if patient feels pain, you have no idea whether right front maxillary sinus is tender or left maxillary sinus is tender. Okay? So this is how we have completed, you can say, facio maxillary region as well, isn't it? Then we will move forward to the internal nose. So here we don't need, because there is no, you know, obviously there is nothing which we can go for percussion or auscultation, isn't it? So that is excluded and we move on to the internal nose. Now internal nose are nasal cavity. We know that it is divided into two. One is vestibule, the other one is nasal cavity proper. And vestibule is that area which is skin lined and it contains vibrissae or hair. Okay? So again, the inspection of the nasal cavity. So how we have to do the inspection of the nasal cavity? For inspection, again the light will be on. Okay? And with the left hand, four fingers over the forehead of the patient and with the thumb pulp, you will just tilt the tip of the nose upwards, okay? So this is anterior rhinoscopy, this is, because from anterior side we are going to examine the nasal cavity, but this is without any speculum. So four fingers over the forehead, it tilt of tip of the nose and you will see inside the nasal cavities. And what we have to look for? Color of the mucous membrane, then any discharge, as I said, any swelling, any foreign body, any mass, any deflection of the nasal septum, so forth and so on. 
okay and at the same time we have to look for the size of the vestibule of the nose because next step in examination is anterior rhinoscopy with nasal speculum and with when i say the nasal with nasal speculum this is the nasal speculum which we will use and you can see the blades are prongs of these they are of different sizes so in according to the size of the nasal vestibule we have to choose this speculum which is called as thudicum's nasal speculum t h u d i c h u m apostrophe s thudicum's nasal speculum there is another speculum this is also nasal speculum but this is called as kilian's nasal speculum kilian's and you can see again different long blades small blades this is something in between like this so according to the need we have to choose the nasal speculum for anterior rhinoscopy in outdoor patients we use this speculum which is called as thudicum's nasal speculum because these prongs they should remain confined to the nasal vestibule which is skin lined at no point these prongs should touch the mucous membrane of the nasal cavity proper because mucosa is more sensitive as compared to skin and if infection or inflammation is there when we will touch the mucosa it will be painful patient may start sneezing and even mucosa can bleed so we have to remain confined to the nasal vestibule and nasal vestibule after all why we have to use this nasal speculum because the vestibule as i said it is skin lined and it is containing hair so those hair they are obscuring sometimes our view to look deep into the nasal cavity proper so we have to you know remove this uh, keep these hair away from our visual field for that purpose we have to use it and that's why now in addition to whatever we have to look for in the vestibule this is the reason we have to do the inspection before choosing the nasal speculum because if we don't do the inspection we may choose long bladed nasal speculum okay then comes very important is how to hold this nasal speculum first thing is you have to hold it in your left hand because its purpose is just to dilate the nasal vestibule to keep hair away your right hand should be free for any active manipulation inside the nasal cavity when i say active manipulation for example if there is discharge you have to remove the that discharge by suction then if something is there for example foreign body you may have to remove that so you have to use your right hand so your right hand should be free so it will be in your left hand then your index finger of the left hand it should be pointing towards you Now just to remember that morally also you should not point towards others you should always look forward towards you so this finger will be pointing towards you and these prongs of the nasal vestibule will be towards the patient then it is moving so you have to stabilize it with the pulp of the thumb so nasal speculum is held steady between the pulps of the thumb and index finger of the left hand while the prongs are blades of this nasal speculum this is pointing towards the patient. patient then we cannot introduce it like that isn't it because it will not go into the nasal cavity so we have to close it so while introducing inside the nasal cavity and while withdrawing it this nasal speculum should be closed how we can close between your middle and ring fingers you will close it like this now this is closed so when we will introduce it inside the nasal in the vestibule gradually we will reduce the pressure and it will gradually open then we can clearly look into the nasal cavity proper and then we can close it and then we can withdraw it outwards and then we will go on the other side so it will be closed it will be inside the nasal cavity gradually you will and you will look far into the nasal cavity you 
will close it, you will take it out and you will go on the other side. Again you will release the pressure, you will see inside and then you will close it and you will take it out. So this is the interior ionoscopy with nasal spectrum. Okay? Inside the nasal cavity, now more clear, as I said, if swelling is there, you have to go for the characteristics of that swelling. If any discharge, the characteristics of discharge, like color, like its amount, like its consistency, like its color, etc. It is smelly or not, like this. If some powder body is there, or some mass is there, the characteristics of those masses are there. So this is the, basically this was the interior ionoscopy and this was the inspection. And in examination, our second step is palpation. So inside the nasal cavity, we cannot do the palpation with our fingers, isn't it? So what we will do that instead of fingers, we can use any, you know, blunt probe. When I say blunt probe, there are different uh, shapes and different sizes of blunt probes are available because on palpation, what we have to do? We have to check whether that particular area, that particular, you know, mass or anything that is tender or not, it is sensitive to touch or not, whether it bleeds on touch or not, how much is, how is the consistency of that, isn't it? All these things we have to look for. So same thing can be done with any blunt probe. So this is what it is called as eustachian tube and you know its end is blunt. So we can use that, this for palpation or we can use any other blunt probe for palpation. So this will be the alternative of finger inside the nasal cavity. Okay. So after palpation, again inside the nasal cavity, we don't have to go for percussion and auscultation.